Hello everybody, this is Ali and today we're going to get back to studying for Qiskit Developer Certificate Exam and last time we talked about um, setting up your environment, today we are going to talk about what's the differences between the quantum circuits and classical circuit uh, because knowing this difference conceptually important before starting to set up the circuit itself. So when it comes to quantum circuits and classical circuits there are like a five main differences between these two circuits one of them is that you can say that the classical circuits are in the space and quantum circuits are in time i know that it's a little bit confusing but this is a concept that we're going to work through that by talking about the logic gates in the circuits today and the other differences between the classical uh, circuit and the quantum circuit is that in the quantum circuit you have the superposition and you also have the no cloning law the, in quantum mechanics so that's the thing that makes it a little bit different from the classical circuit you cannot just like a copy the data um, number four is the reversibility in the quantum mechanics uh, we're going to talk about like what it means and how it's not exactly true in the classical circuit. And last item is the entanglement. Entanglement is a thing that is uh, unique to quantum mechanics and quantum circuits. Um, the important thing to know is that classical circuits are usually applied by transistors. To avoid the video gets too long, I'm not going to discuss about the trans details of the transistors but I'm gonna post some links to the good videos that describe how the transistor functions. I'm just gonna mention that here, you are gonna have like a decent structure that shows here. You can see that usually they have like a three legs and it consists of the semiconductors that is like either PNP, positive, negative, positive, semiconductor or NPN, uh, that basically PNN showing the nature of the doping in the semiconductor but what we're gonna consider them here or like what is that the role that they're playing in the classical circuit is that they are like switches but the main difference between the switch between the like a transistor as a switch versus like a physical switch is that you don't really need a physical person to turn off or on the switch but you can actually control that with the potential difference that you apply. And the other thing is that you can actually not basically open the switch completely. So you can have a control on how much current that it passed through. It also can be used for amplification. But in the topic of the today, we mainly consider them as just plain switches. Uh, after that, we are gonna talk about uh, different gates the first gate that i'm going to mention it is sort of trivial it's something that you may ask for yourself why they exist it is called the buffer gate but it, what it basically does is that it doesn't really change any operation on the signal itself so if the input is zero basically if uh, uh, the switch is open your output is also zero basically if you have a lamp here it's not gonna turn on and if the switch is closed your lamp is gonna turn on and these buffer gates um, are sort of similar to what we call identity gate in the quantum mechanic uh, there are many reasons to kind of define them from the mathematical point of view they are important because they can help you to make the gates as one group uh, in a group theory uh, but in the physical sense the importance of them is that um, imagine that you have several qubits and you are making operations on uh, some of the qubits but you're not doing that on other qubits but the thing is that in the period that you are applying logic gates to the other qubits the one that is not um, uh, the one that is not having any logic gate being applied on it 
it is still susceptible to noise. So you can actually say that, that in the period of the time you're applying that identity gate to it and you can define that what would be the noise for that identity gate. Um, the other one that I want to talk about is NOT gate. So here in the quantum mechanic, we call that NOT gate. In the classical uh, circuit, we are call them inverter gate. Uh, you can see here in the left, you can see the schematic of that with the transistor, but again, we are looking at them as a switch. So what it does is basically invert the, the inverse uh, result. So if the switch is open, you cannot have any current going this way. So I would be zero. So the only current that is passing through would be through this line and the lamp turns on. But so, and we, when you have the input zero, when you have the switch open, your output is actually one. Your output be, would be the, like a, the fact that if the lamp is on or off. But if your switch is actually closed, if you remember your uh, physics one or physics two course, you remember that now you have sort of a short circuit here. There's no resistance here and all the current passing through here and there would be I here would be zero and your lamp does not turn on. Um, here in this case, we can actually see what we mean when we are talking about that um, classical circuit is a circuit in space because if so right now you put the lamp here on this part of the circuit and that is what make it the inver inverter um, gate if you put your lamp here it was always gonna stay it will always gonna stay on basically at this point if you're it, at this point it wouldn't really matter if your switch is open or not you're always going to signal so based on the position that you put the lamp in the circuit you can get a different result however when it comes to inversion in the quantum mechanics we have not really talked about the qubits yet um, but i'm just going to mention like a briefly you can imagine that like the in the in one qubit you would have two uh, possible state and then you can have a superposition of them one of them with the zero state or like a ground state and the other one would be uh, state one or excited state and again you can have a superposition of them zero state conventionally was shown in the block sphere as a spin goes to the north pole and as a vector you're going to the north pole and the excited states uh, conventionally was shown uh, as a vector going to the south pole, it's sort of like the spin up and a spin down system. So when we are doing the not gate here, imagine that we are starting with the state zero and we are doing the not gate, we are applying some pulse field. There's some B field that is, has a pulse shape passing by and it kind of interact with the spin and move that down and move it to the spin down, for example and you now go to the other state, you go to the excited state. In this case, you don't have any part of the physical system anymore that is in the ground state in your one, one qubit system. If you go past in time, there's a time stamp that your spin is in ground state, but there's no space in your circuit at this point that has like a ground state spin. That is the kind of conversation when we talk about classical circuit is in a space versus the quantum circuit with, uh, which is in time. While we are here, we're also going to talk about other gates. AND gate. Uh, AND gate is when you, you need to have both uh, states to be one or like here, do you need to have the both switches closed so you would turn on the lamp and any other case would be no lamp turned on. This is like a series when they have the switches in series or gate or gate is like when it's like when you have the switches in parallel. So if just one of these two is closed, you would have a signal. You would have the lamp turned on 
and you can see the table that you have here is called the truth table basically shows that based on the input data that you have what would you do out here i also gotta show the logic case with their schematic that they have here so i know if you draw something like that in the middle school or like a high school you would get a detention but uh when you are in undergrad or graduate program it's called logic gates so don't tell me that like a higher level graduation doesn't open the doors for you uh the other one that we're talking about is the or gate uh which kind of uh it looks like an and gate but it's kind of sharper um here in case of or gate we talked about it's like a parallel switches only one of them closed we turn on the light the next one is the NAND gate. It, what it is, is like a NOT AND AND gate. So it reverses off the AND gate. So you, if you have both of the switches closed, you don't get any signal. But if you have just one of them closed or not, none of them closed, you would get a signal. NOR gate is like a NOT OR gate. Um, in this case, similar like that you remember what is the result for the or gate it is the not inverse of that so the other thing that we the other two gates that we also going to mention is the x or gate and x nor gate so to understand the x or gate let's compare that with the typical or gate that we have in the typical or gate if we have just one of these the switches closed, you would get the light turned on. Here in the XOR gate, if you have a two switches closed, you would not have the lamp on. Uh, you just need to have one of those uh, switches closed um, to be able to uh, have the lamp turned on. So it would be a really good practice to try to construct that circuit to see how should you put up the switch together to get the X OR gate? X NOR gate is like that too. It's like X NOT OR gate. It's uh, basically the only way that the lamp is turned on is when the switch, both of the switches are open or both of the switches are closed. So one of the reasons that I don't even showed a, a specific uh, circuit design for X OR gate or X NOR gate is that there are no unique design for that here we are gonna show you so like if for example the desire gate is the x nor gate the one that shows here there are like a two possible way to construct it one of them is the nor gates the other one is using the nand gates um so they are not unique okay um i hope you found this video useful in the next video, we are going to discuss superposition and no uh, cloning law. And after that, there would be another video that we're talking about reversibility and entanglement. And hopefully by the end of the next two videos, we will be ready to really attack the circuits themselves, getting familiar with the uh, single qubit gates and multiple, multiple qubit gates and how to construct the circuit and how to read and measure if you found the video useful i would appreciate a like and if you want to join me in this journey and continue in this study don't forget to subscribe i'll see you in the next video